What's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy John coming back to you again with another video. Hope all is well on the other side of the internet. Taking care of yourself, man. Guess what? Guess what? I've been reading the Bible. Crazy, right? I've been reading the Bible. I've really got hooked onto the whole mythology of the Bible and the archetypes that are laid out. Because you have these stories, right? You have these stories of these kings, these feuds, these various things that are happening in history. And you see how the basic premise of the story is how human beings have strayed off the path. Yeah, they've strayed off the path. God's given them a path. He said, be righteous, be strong, be loving, be kind. Don't be selfish, don't be greedy. Don't feed your ego, basically. And always, in all the stories, when human beings stray off the path, it's because they've stopped listening to God, basically. They've stopped listening to the commandments. They've decided to take things into their own hands. The big thing in the Bible is your own understanding versus God's understanding. If you look at the book of Proverbs, I never used to read the book of Proverbs. In fact, I never used to read the Bible before, man. I only started reading the Bible in COVID, lockdown. Before that, I never read the Bible because I always thought it was just, you know, good literature, interesting stories, but nothing really meaningful for me. Nothing for me in there, right? I'm a young man in the 20th century. I need something else. I don't care about the Bible. But man, I'm not, I'm not lying. When I, when I was in COVID and all I was doing was lifting weights, meditation, what else was I doing? Lifting weights, meditation, chilling out. But I was reading the Bible a lot. Why did I start reading the Bible? Well, I got on NoFap as well at the same time. I quit porn. And I still have quit porn, right? I still quit it. And the thing is, I needed strength to, to quit it. I needed strength because a lot of demons started coming within when I got on NoFap. A lot of demons started popping up from the, the ether, right? <laughs> And I, I really felt like I was losing my shit, man. I thought I was going insane. Because for years, I was addicted to this thing, right? And that's weakness. It is. But I had to accept that, God, I was, I was weak. I was weak, you know? And I had to accept that. And that was a humiliating thing to do. I was weak. I was dependent on these vices to, as a strength. But it wasn't a strength at all, was it? It was a temporary fix. So I needed something. I needed some sort of voice of encouragement. I was on YouTube. We had lots of people from the community, of course. Leonard Banks, Elijah Long. Elijah Long. We had a few others as well who were talking about no PMO and why it's important to get on it. But the one that really started to pop out, man, was the voice of God. <laughs> the voice of God. And I felt... And this is creepy and weird, but if you're into that whole law of attraction slash manifestation business, you'll know what I mean when I say that the things that you need will appear, but the things that you want, not necessarily, right? If you think in your heart that this is what I want, and this is what's going to make me happy, and this is what I need, and you accept it wholeheartedly with a pure heart, God delivers this to you. God will deliver this thing to you. And he'll deliver it to you like that. Like that. But the thing is, do you actually want this thing, right? Is this really the thing that you want? If it's not, it won't come to you. If you don't think you're deserving of it just yet, it won't come. Because you have to be completely aligned. Yeah? You have to be completely aligned. So I've gone through a few things so far. But the big thing that men... That I, that I feel like plagues young men, because, you know, I, I was a young man. I'm still a young man, I'm 25, but, you know, the twilight of my years is coming, right? I'm going to eventually go into adulthood properly, and I consider myself a proper adult now. The big thing is that we don't have a spiritual purpose in our lives. In fact, we don't have a spiritual anything anymore in our lives. We don't have a spiritual connection anymore to anything. I've travelled all across the world. I've gone to America, I've gone to Thailand, I'm going to go to China, I've lived in England all my life. And I've always felt 
completely alienated from my society. I felt that this society just wasn't the one that I was meant to be in. I went to Thailand and I made more friends there than I ever would have made in England. I had more of a pleasant and, and spiritual experience in Thailand, man. Just making friends, being kind, meeting random people, having great experiences. And it's not like I can't do that in England. Of course you can, you can do that anywhere. In fact, one of my missions in England is to practice being kind and righteous even when I feel like I don't want to. Even when I don't feel like I, I should. You know, it, and that's a weird one because it's not me saying, you know, if someone's being disrespectful to you or someone's being an unrighteous person, you should be kind to them. I think you still should, to be honest, unless they have done something to justify war. And really, let's be real, man. This is my question. This is the question I've always asked myself my entire life. What actually constitutes an act of war? Because I, I've always not, I've always learned how to fight. In recent years, I've really stepped that game up a little bit. Started taking boxing a little bit more seriously. Thinking about a competition. So I've taken the fighting business a little bit more seriously in the in the recent years. But as I've taken the fighting more seriously, it's led me to the thinking: What actually constitutes war? What constitutes a fight? Where should you? When should you fight in real life? And I don't have a resolution to this, but I know that the answer is in the Bible. When someone violates your independence, your freedom, physically attacks your family, or violates you to such a degree that it has to be resolved there, it has to be resolved. It's a violation of such a high degree that it has to be resolved. Because if this behaviour continues, it could constitute to a lot more than just personal defeat. I've always wrestled with this debate because I, I know people who will fight at a moment's notice. They'll fight if you look at them the wrong way. They'll fight if you slight them in any sort of small way. They take disrespect very seriously in these circles and I also did. But I didn't know how to necessarily stand up for it without being violent. And I had a lot of anger when I was younger. I had a lot of anger. And uh, I, I once did an anger management course when I was nine, funnily enough. I didn't even remember this. I used to be an angry kid, I guess. And I repressed all that anger because I was told it was wrong to be angry. And I was told that it was actually sinful and stupid. So I repressed the anger. But then when I repressed the anger, it led me to have a a lack of assertiveness in my life because I just didn't know when I should ever, ever assert myself. If ever. If you ever should, right? As I've gotten older, I've realised that if you just trust God, the right moment comes for you to assert yourself when you need to. Because being righteous and being kind is a choice. It's not something you do because you have to. It's a choice. Like, you could just not be that way and, alright, maybe inflict on yourself some negative karma or just not be nice, I guess, or just not be kind. You could do that, but your community suffers. Your relations with your community will suffer. It's not very nice. But it's a choice. I'm going to stress that a lot. It's a choice. It's not something that you have to do. If you feel like you have to do it, that means you're just being a people pleaser. And if you're being a people pleaser, you ain't going to be very happy being a people pleaser for the rest of your life, are you? That's just the way these things go, I think. So going on to the other thing. What do you think gives you the actual answer to know when to fight, know when to make love, to be righteous and maybe not to be righteous? I'll tell you what. A spiritual conviction in some kind... Hmm. No, not some kind. A spiritual conviction in a well-articulated vision for the future as well as for your life. You see, we live in an era where liberalism kind of rules, right? The individual is the most sacred thing. 
the individual is the most important thing possible and freedom freedom of speech freedom of this and that freedom of everything this is our highest value system and we've lived in this value system for a few years now haven't we humanity hasn't just lived in this value system for a few years but i'm saying you i mean you were born in this right humanity's lived in this for what i think 300 years this value system of freedom of the of the self freedom of the individual this is the most important thing for the society as it is commonly said